Shalom. Blessings to you. This is part two of Wall of Fire. And first we have to understand what the Jews were feeling and what they were up against. Now, when they left Egypt, God took them on his own little path. Okay. Now they got to a turning point where Moses knew because he was a shepherd all in that whole area, as we know up and through Midian and all those there. And he could have taken a left and taken them to safe, green, watered ground. But God wasn't done using them to show for all millennia, even to us today, his great mercy. And so there was, you know, mountains and deserts and they were coming through this path, through this set of mountains on either side you could still go through this path today it's still very narrow and there's only one way in and one way out and the path comes down onto a beach okay and down here excuse me one second is the water all right, so the Jews were all in here, all of them, and here comes the Egyptians. And this wall of fire hung, and this dark cloud hung right here. And they, they were bottlenecked in between these sets of mountains, no other way around, no way through. The Egyptians were coming. And this wall of fire and dark cloud and lightnings and all that stayed up here all night long while the east winds blew a path right through the middle here and allowed the Jews to pass safely. All right, let's continue, shall we? Now we are going to be in the Colburn Bible and we're going to read an Egyptian account of when the Jews crossed over and what was it like for the for the Egyptians now there's several accounts in this history book um, but we're going to begin in book of manuscripts chapter 6 the dark days uh, verse 30 The host of Pharaoh came upon the slaves by the salt water shores, but was held back from them by a breath of fire. A great cloud was spread over the hosts and darkened the sky. None could see except for the fiery glow and the unceasing lightnings which rent the covering cloud overhead. A whirlwind arose in the east and swept over the encamped host. A gale raged all night, and in the red twilight dawn, dawn there was a movement of the earth. The waters receded from the seashore and were rolled back on themselves. There was a strange silence, and then in the gloom it was seen that the waters had parted, leaving a passage between. The land had risen but it was disturbed and trembled, and the way was not straight or clear. The waters about were as if spun within a bowl. The swampland alone remained undisturbed. Now remember, the swampland being very green and lush was given to Joseph for his father and all his relatives when he first brought them over during the um, plagues, right? The original seven-year uh, famine and seven years of plenty. You know, he gave him that beautiful swampland. And from the horn of the destroyer, the, from the sky, came a high shrilling noise which stopped the ears of men, which we know as the sound of the shofar. It's talked about and prophesied in Revelation. Hallelujah. The slaves had been making sacrifices in despair, their lamentations were loud, and now, before the strange sight, there was hesitation. For the space of a breath, they stood still and silent, 
And then they all started running in exultation. Their leader, Moses, led them into the midst of the waters and through the waters. All became still over the sea and upon the shore. But behind, the earth shook and the boulders split with a great noise. The wrath of heaven was removed to a distance and stood upwards of the two hosts. Still, the host of Pharaohs held its ranks right. Firm and resolved before the strange and awful happenings and undaunted by the fury which raged by their side, stern faces were lit darkly by the fiery curtain. Then the fury departed and there was silence. Stillness spread over the land while the host of Pharaoh stood without movement in the red glow. And remember, this is in the morning, right? And with a shout, the captains went forward and the host rose up behind them. The curtain of fire had rolled up into a dark billowing cloud which spread out as a canopy. There was a stirring of the waters, but they followed past the place of the great whirlpool. The passage was confused in the midst of the waters and the ground beneath unstable. And here in the midst of the toll mute of waters, and you see a lot of it scratched out because of my frustration, the way he was praising the Pharaoh and his bravery. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, again, a reference to Exodus 14, beginning at verse 19. But let's continue here. The stillness was broken by a mighty roar, and through the rolling pillars of cloud, the wrath of the destroyer descended upon the hosts. The heavens roared with, as with a thousand thunders, and the bowels of the earth were sundered, and the earth shrieked in its agony. The cliffs were torn away and cast down. The dry ground fell beneath the waters, and great waves broke upon the shore, sweeping in rocks from seaward. The great surge of rocks and waters overwhelmed the chariots of the Egyptians who went before the footmen. The chariot of Pharaoh was hurled into the air as if by a mighty hand and was crushed in the midst of the rolling waters. Amen. And I wanted to read one more thing regarding what is in our heavens right now. <laughs> Still in Manuscripts 12, verse 11. Let the destroyer come. Uh, we would say biblically, let wormwood come as the whirlwind of the barren places in the dread day of its appearance. In the dread day of its appearance, the works of ignorance shall go down to everlasting. Amen. In the day of its appearance, the works of ignorance shall go down to everlasting. All right, we got through it. But there's so much in this book. All right, let's read a little more. Like, I just can't stop. <laughs> I'm on fire. Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Okay, we're going to jump back, and we're still in the book of Manuscripts, chapter 5, the destroyer, the doom shape, what we call wormwood, called the destroyer, planet X, Nibiru, whatever you want to call it. But in Egypt, it was seen in all the lands thereabouts. In color, it was bright and fiery, in appearance changing and unstable. It twisted about itself like a coil like water bubbling up into a pool from an underground supply, and all men agree it was a most fearsome sight. It was not a great comet or a loosened star, being more like a fiery body of flame. Some also call it the smoky god. Its movements on high were slow. Below it swirled in the manner of smoke, and it remained close to the sun, whose face it hid. You know, we can't see our golden sun anymore. All we see is a white sun, and we call it a sun simulator. This thing has a long history of remaining close to the sun and hiding the sun's face. I guess thousands of years ago they had a sun simulator as well. Hmm, somehow I doubt it. 
come on, we need to snap out of this sun simulator um, deception. Please, please, please. Hallelujah. There was a bloody redness about it, which changed as it passed along its course. It caused death and destruction in its rising and setting. It swept the earth with grace and rain and caused many plagues, con hunger, and other evils. It bit the skin of men and beasts until they became mottled with sores. The earth was troubled and shook, and the hills and mountains moved and rocked. The dark smoke-filled heavens bowed over earth, and a great howl came to the ears of living men again with the shofar, borne to them upon the wings of the wind. It was the cry of the dark lord, the master of dread. Yes, sinners have every reason to fear him, hallelujah. Thick clouds of fiery smoke passed before him, and there was an awful hail of hot stones and coals of fire. The doom shape thundered sharply in the heavens and shot out bright lightings. The channels of water were turned back unto themselves when the land tilted when the land tilted, when the poles shifted, hallelujah, the great trees were tossed about and snapped like twigs. And we know that the earth used to be covered with trees the size and the likes of which we can only dream about in our sci-fi um, books, right, <laughs> and movies, hallelujah. But And we know in the New Jerusalem they will be restored. Then a voice like 10,000 trumpets, that's Jesus, yes, was heard over the wilderness, and before its burning breath, the flames parted. The whole of the land moved, and mountains melted. The sky itself roared like 10,000 lions in agony, and bright arrows of blood sped back and forth across its face earth swelled up like bread upon the hearth. This was the aspect of the doom shape called the destroyer. When it appeared in days long gone by, in olden times, it is thus described in the old records, few of which remain. It is said that when it appears in the heavens above, earth splits open from the heat like a nut roasted before the fire. Then flames shoot up through the surface and leap about like fiery fiends upon black blood. The moisture inside the land is all dried up. The pastures and cultivated places are consumed in flames, and they and all trees become white ashes. The doom shape is like a circling ball of flame, which scatters small fiery offspring in its train. It covers about a fifth part of the sky, and sends writhing snake-like fingers down to earth. We see pictures of this in the sky-watching videos every day. Hallelujah. And uh, apparently it's 60% bigger in the last year. <laughs> it's getting closer. And before it, the sky appears frightened, and it breaks up and scatters away. Midday is no brighter than night. It spawns a host of terrible things. These are things said of the destroyer in the old records. Read them with solemn heart, knowing that the doom shape has its appointed time and will return. It would be foolish to let them go unheeded. Now, men say, such things are not destined for our days. May the great God above grant that this be so. But come, the day surely will, and in accordance with his nature, the man will be unprepared. That right, goes on. I mean, there's multiple accounts here. You want me to keep on? All right, okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> Chapter 6, The Dark Days, Manuscript 6, verse 1. The dark days began with the last visitation of the destroyer, and they were foretold by strange omens in the skies. How were they foretold? By a sun simulator? Hmm, no, that's an easy explanation, isn't it? Let's give man the credit. No, 
They were foretold by strange omens in the skies. Our forefathers knew to uh, pay heed to what's going on in the heavens. Uh, all men were silent and went about with pale faces. The leaders of the slaves, and that's in reference to the Jews, and that's in reference to Moses and Miriam and Aaron, which had built a city to the glory of Thom, uh, stirred up unrest, and no man raised his arm against them. They foretold great events of which the people were ignorant and of which the temple seers were not informed. These were the days of ominous calm when the people waited for they knew not what. And it talks about the presence of an unseen doom. Um, the slaves, that is the Jews, became bold and insolent, and women were the possession of any man. Fear walked the land, and women became barren with terror. They could not conceive, and those with child aborted. All men closed up within themselves. The days of stillness were followed by a time when the noise of trumpeting again with the trumpets, the shofars, and shrilling was heard in the heavens, and people became as frightened beasts without a herdsman. And so when this happens to us, we're going to know what's going on, and we're not going to be afraid. We're just going to get on our knees and start praying for all of God's children, hallelujah, all of our brothers and sisters all over the world, amen, that they would have peace. Uh, as asses when lions prowl without their fold, people are going to be freaking out. The people spoke of the God of the slaves, that is Yahuwah, and reckless men said, if we knew where this God were to be found, we would sacrifice to him. But the God of the slaves was not among them, he was not to be found within the swamplands or in the brick pits. His manifestation was in the heavens. <laughs> Where is his manifestation? It's in the heavens for all men to see. But they did not see with understanding. And even now we do not see with understanding as long as we're giving credit to man for God's good works. He is the father of lights. And he's in control of what's going on in the heavens. And there is no sun simulator. And he's going to protect us with his own wall of fire now, just like he did them then. Right? Hallelujah. And, and, and they said they were praying to any God who would listen, but none would. And why can't any other God listen? Because they're all dead. Our Father's the only living God. Amen. And for all were dumb because of the hypocrisy of men. And the dead were no longer sacred, and they're thrown out of their graves. The fish in the river died. Look over here. Insects and reptiles are springing up. They're referring to the um, plague.